Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. This is an unusual story about an unusual grandmother who, without really being able to explain it, performed an act of the supernatural. Yes, supernatural, because sitting in her room in a nursing home, working on a needlepoint portrait of her old house, she somehow brought her son to his senses and created peace where there was chaos. It began in the strangest way. Nell Atterwood's grandson, Rick, 25, was paying her a visit at the home. What's that you're working on, Grandma? A picture of my old house. Oh, a copy of the needlepoint in Dad's living room. <laughs> More or less. Mm-hmm. You've left out the maple tree by the side of the house. Oh, it never should have been there in the first place, Rick. Killed the grass. I've taken it out. Mm-hmm. So did the windstorm night before last. Oh. The old maple blew over. Did you know that? No. Oh. Uh, Funny coincidence, isn't it? Our mystery drama, Wishes Can Be Fatal, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Roy Windsor and stars Carmen Matthews. Are thoughts just dreams until their effects have been tried? Maybe. I'm not sure. If you have a thought and act on it, you'll find out if it's useful or foolish. But what about thoughts you don't act on? Is any one of them strong enough to affect someone else? Extrasensory perception, for instance. Some psychologists use that phrase to explain clairvoyance and telepathy. Can we deny them? And can a thought not acted on act of itself? Evening, darling. Oh, why are you home so early? It's only 5.30. The buyer canceled the appointment. I'm afraid he's decided on some other house. And there goes your commission. That's the way it goes in real estate. We could have used that money. I know it. We're overspent. We'll have to cut down, Elsa. Cut down where? We didn't need the new car. Not right after you had the kitchen redone. I just can't afford... The old car was six years old and falling apart. It made me feel creepy driving it. You know, you don't know what it's like for a new wife to move into a house where you lived with her and two children and your mother. Ghosts in every room. That car was hers, so was the kitchen, and our bedroom was her bedroom. Got to sell this old ark and buy a place of our own. I like the house. My roots are here. Well, mine aren't. Uh, look, Ed, your mother's in a home. Yeah. Whenever I think about it, I feel rotten. Nothing wrong with my mother. She didn't belong here with us. It was her home. She owned and it. And gave it to you. She wasn't happy with me here. She didn't expect you to remarry. He's better off in a nursing home than in this old place. Oh, darling, why must we always argue about my mother and the house? It's mine. My mother never visits, and my children are off on their own. I just feel smothered by your past. Ed, let's sell the house. Move to Florida. Real estate's big business down there. In no time, you'd be making all kinds of money. And think of the weather and the beaches and, and being away from, from all of this. Is that what you really want? Yes, Ed. I, I'm just stifled here. And it's what I'm going to have one way or the other. Let me think about it. What's there to think about? Well, for one thing, money. Well, this house is worth something. Not too much after I pay back the mortgage. But the money you borrowed can be added to the sales price. A lot of it went into repairs. And the new car. And the new kitchen. And into redecorating. And into my mink coat. Okay, say it. You're thinking it. Am I supposed to run around in rags? Oh, I don't begrudge you any of these things, Elsa. 
I'm just saying they cost money. And I'm just not selling enough to keep up with the expenses. Well, ask your mother to help out. Ask my mother? Why not? She's still got a substantial income from stocks and savings. After giving me the house, you want me to ask her for more help? What if I cozy up to her? I don't think I'd try, Elsa. She's 74, but she's as sharp as a razor. No, I wouldn't try that. Where are you going? Upstairs to lie down for half an hour. Oh, did they come over and cut that old maple into logs? Yes, they stacked it in the cellar. Sorry about losing that old tree. That's odd. What's odd? The needlepoint picture of the house. What about it? I could swear that when my mother made it for us, the old maple was right there. It's gone. Well, you're mistaken. If it was there, how could it not be there now? The real maple's gone, blown over by the wind. And the maple in the picture is now gone. I find that very strange. Hey, Paul, how's my favorite sister? Oh, fine. What's this favorite sister, Jazz? I'm the only sister you've got. <laughs> true, true. So, this is it. I like it. Not bad, right? This little living room, a bedroom, and kitchen, all for 175 and utilities. Mm, pretty good location, too. The shore road's okay. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Well, sit down, Rick. Hey. Mother's old Windsor chair. <laughs> I'll be darned. Oh, Dad said I could have it, and Marie Antoinette couldn't have cared less. She goes for ultra-modern in aluminum and fake leather. Mm. I took some other old things, too, and some photographs. I always liked that one you took of Mother and Dad. Yeah. Yeah, I like it, too. <sighs> what a mess. But it's a fact, and we have to live with it. Oh, he could have fallen for that selfish, tasteless chorus girl. I'll never know. Model, not chorus girl. No, I don't know. He's only 51 and lost after Mother died. Mm, Along comes this girl, Elsa, whose teeth can cut steel. What are you going to do about it? Nothing. She drove Grandma into a nursing home. We couldn't stand to live there. I'm sorry for Dad, but I'm glad I've got a place of my own. What if we found a big place? Two or three bedrooms and the three of us moved in. Three? Uh, which three? You and I and Grandma. I hate to think of her in that nursing home. She seems to be doing all right. I don't know, Paul. The idea of the three of us together doesn't really send me... uh... Oh, she'd love to keep house for us. Maybe, but we're not kids, uh... We got our own friends. Now, I, I love Grandma, but I don't see myself as her little boy again. Or you, too. No, no, no. Gran is all right. She's lonely for what was, I suppose. I worry about Grandma. No, don't. She's well. She just needle points. Right now, she's making another portrait of the old house. Oh, that's sad. Yeah. It's something else, too. Her copy hasn't got the old maple tree in it. You... Do you remember the one? I carved my initials in it when I was six. Well, maybe she's forgotten the tree. No. No, she's leaving it out because it's no longer there. But the tree blew down night before last, and Grandma didn't know about it. That's off the wall. Weird, right? How are you, Mother Atterwood? What else, sir? What an unexpected surprise. Do sit down. Oh, thank you. How are you, my dear? Quite well, thank you. Ed sends his regards. Well, that's very nice of my son. And how are you? No complaints. (laughs) This is a nice nursing home. Old folks' home, I should say. Not many need nursing. (laughs) I managed to fill my time and get outside whenever I want a change of scenery. I went into the city last week with a friend. And had a glorious time last Wednesday. Took in a matinee and had supper um, at a very good Italian restaurant on 53rd Street. Sounds wonderful. Theater, dinner. We haven't been in the city since before Christmas. Can't afford it. Oh? 
I thought Ed was doing quite well. Not well enough to keep up with expenses, and we've had a lot of them lately. I even suggested he sell the house and we move to Florida. Oh, and you like that? Oh, I'd like anything better than being cooped up where I am. Then I think that that's what you ought to do. Sell and move. You mean that? Of course. I don't say what I don't mean, Elsa. You know that. Well, Ed's reluctant to be so far away from you and his, his children. Oh, I'm content. And the children are hardly children. Rick's 25 and Polly, let me see, no more than 23. Tell Ed not to let us stand in his way. He's begun a new life with you. Well, I'm surprised to hear you say that. You're much happier with me here and with Rick and Polly elsewhere. Isn't that true? That's a, a harsh way of putting it. It's not sentimental, if that's being harsh. If we sold the house, a lot of the money would have to be used to pay off our debt. I'm surprised you have debt. Oh, we've got a list a mile long. And when they're paid off, there won't be much left to start a new life in Florida. So... I wonder if... I think not, Elsa. Why not? It's your son. And you have more money than you'll ever need. He's also over 21. If he's been imprudent, he'll have to economize. But we can't go to Florida with just a few thousand dollars. Florida isn't going to run away. Get out of debt, and it will be waiting there to welcome you. You wouldn't consider... My dear Elsa... Under no circumstances whatsoever. What? Oh, no. Poor Chin Chin, that poor little dog. Who ran over him? What? Left him to die in the street. Horrible. He's where? <laughs> My husband will come get him. <laughs> oh, poor Jim. Hey, what's the matter, Doc? <laughs> Here, hang up the telephone. Oh, and someone ran over and pinched in and killed him. And left it to die in the street. Oh, I'm so sorry, darling. I really am. Please don't cry. <laughs> You hated Chin Chin. Now, how can you say that? You called him a nasty little mob. I liked him. Where is he now? This is a humane society. I don't want him destroyed. We'll bury him in the backyard. All right. I'll drive over there now. Will you be all right? I will never be all right. First, your rotten mother. Now, watch it, Elsa. She is selfish. I told her our plans, and she said that under no circumstances would she help us. And she's quite right. We're stuck right here until I get us out of debt. But I don't want to stay here. She's a selfish, nasty old woman. I'll be back soon. I'll be darned. Elsa, come here. Look at the needlepoint picture. That miserable thing. I hate it. When my mother made it for us for a wedding present, she put Chin Chin in it. Down here in the middle of the front lawn. Do you remember that? Yes. Oh. Where is Chin Chin in the picture? Gone. He's gone. Chin Chin is dead and his picture is... Gone. Get that thing out of the room before I destroy it. Get it out or I'll destroy it! Can a wish become an act? In what other way can we explain that as old Mrs. Atterwood makes a copy of her original needlepoint portrait of her former house, omitting certain items from the copy, those same items disappear from the original? Even more remarkable is the terrifying disappearance of the real items, the tree and the Pekingese dog. More when we continue with Act Two. I don't 
don't suppose there's anyone who at one time or another hasn't said, I could kill him, or I wish he were dead. Angry remarks soon forgotten. And of course, we've all heard the expression, if thoughts could kill. Now, is that possible? Well, my goodness, the two of you. <laughs> Please sit down. How are you, Grandma? Oh, just fine. Are they treating you okay? If they didn't, they'd hear about it, Rick. <laughs> no, no, it's a nice enough place. But it's not home. Well, yes, it is. A home for the homeless. Oh, that sounds sad. Well, it isn't really, Polly. Most of the people here just couldn't manage homes of their own any longer. The time comes when others have to manage for them. I'm still spry enough to run a vacuum and put a meal on the table, but not alone in a home of my own. I wouldn't like to live that way. <laughs> Too lonely. I wish all of us still lived in your old house. Well, we don't, and it's just about time you stop mooning about it. <laughs> Times change. Nothing ever remains the same. Your old house is too full of good memories for me. Well, treasure them. But live for the present. You have your own life to lead, Polly. Don't moon about what was. My goodness, that's just about all that I listen to around here. So you want to stay here? Why, of course. It's not bad at all, and uh, I get out whenever I please. But you still think about the good life we had in the old house, don't you, Grandma? Uh-huh. Well, I mean, why else are you making a copy of that needlepoint picture of the house in the ground? Well, yes. I admit the house holds many memories for me. The needlepoint portrait is a kind of talisman for me, a reminder. Sentimental nonsense, I suppose. Grandma, may I see your needlepoint? Certainly, my dear. It's here in my bag. There you are. You see, Paul? What'd they tell you? No maple tree. Mm. Oh, where's that that dog? Huh? Oh, hey, no chin chin. <laughs> well, I'm glad you left him out, Grandma. Nasty little dog. I agree. He gave me a good nip when I was still living there. <laughs> well, it's going to be a lovely picture, Grandma, and much airier without the maple, <laughs> and more serene without Elsa's pet. Mm. You're. Idealizing it, right, Grandma? Well, I suppose you might say that, Rick. In the original picture, I put in everything that should be there. House, trees, shrubs, the three of you, and Elsa and her Pekingese. In my copy, I'm just going to keep what the house ideally ought to be. And that doesn't include the old maple or the dog. And nature sure cooperated with you about the tree. You, um... You got any more magic up your sleeve? Rick. Well, nice to see you. Hi, Dad. Uh, all right if I come in? Now, what kind of question is that? Well, you might be busy. Come but... in. That's... That's not what you meant, Rick, is it? Well, sit down. Can I get you something? I... No, no, thanks. Um, is, uh... Is Elsa at home? She's upstairs. Very upset. Chin Jin got run over late this afternoon and was killed. What? Oh. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, uh... It's too bad. I, I know how much Elsa loved that dog. Yeah. Well, how come you decided to stop by? I was in the neighborhood... Polly and I had a visit with Grandma, and I just kind of naturally drifted down here. How is Grandma? <laughs> Sharp as a tack. <laughs> you ought to visit her more often, Dad, if, if you don't mind my saying so. I guess Elsa paid her a visit today. Yeah. I asked her not to. I knew what would happen. Uh, your grandmother tell you why Elsa came to see her? Uh, Polly and I kind of dragged it out of her, something about money. Yeah. I'm in debt. And it's my own fault. She's done enough for me. I'd never ask her for another cent. Yeah. I, uh... You see, the old maple's gone. Yeah, we had it cut into logs and stored in the cellar. Mm-hmm. And Chin Chin's dead. That's right. What's that about Chin Chin? Oh, uh... Hi, Elsa. Darling, you ought to be resting. How can I sleep when all I can think about is that poor little dog? 
He was killed this afternoon, Rick. And so Dad just told me. Sorry, Elsa. Thank you. But you didn't like him. Nobody liked him except me. And your grandmother hated him. I know. That's what's funny. What's funny? Well, the old Mabel blows down and the dog dies. It... Have you had a careful look at the needlepoint picture of the old house? We're going to destroy it. The tree and the dog both are gone from it, as if somebody had just picked out the stitches. Have you gotten rid of it, Ed? It's in the cellar. I want it burned before something else happens to it. Darling, what has the picture got to do with what's happened? Everything. There is something evil about it. Can you explain how you can take a tree out of a picture and then the real tree blows over? I'm going down in the cellar and cut the thing to pieces. Don't do that, Elsa. Uh, No, I can't explain how the picture changes and predicts the future. But don't destroy the picture. It might tell us what will happen next. Who is it? It's me, Rick. Oh, just a second. Oh, it's almost 11, Rick. Yeah, yeah, I've been at Dad's. Uh, I told you why I was going to go over there to see him. And? Well, the dog is dead. Elsa's darling little chin-chin was killed late this afternoon. Oh, that's far out, Rick. That's just what it is, far out. Grandma sits over her needlepoint like Madame Defarge over her knitting, recording everyone headed for la guillotine. Oh, that's weird. It scares me stiff. What are we going to do about it? Well, did you tell Dad that... Grandma is making a copy of the original picture of the house? I was going to, but Elsa's so crazy angry about the dog. Who knows what she might do? You mean like going after Grandma? Sure. That doesn't make sense. A a tree can blow over, a dog can die, but who's got the power to make these things happen by changing a picture? We're in the original picture, Rick. So is Dad. And Elsa. Yes. We have to tell him. Uh, Him or Grandma. Maybe we should ask her what she's up to. Well, I thought you did. Didn't you ask her how come she took out the tree and it blew over? Didn't she say coincidence? That's what she said. But I don't believe it. Well, you think she's flipped out? No, but she... Well, she's found some crazy power that's made her deadly. What power? Who knows? Maybe some kind of... A voodoo, you know, needles stuck into a doll. Oh, you don't believe that kind of stuff, do you? I'm ready to believe just about anything. What time is it? Uh, uh, it's too late. I can't visit her now. Well, what about Dad? Well, if Elsa's asleep, I'll speak to him. Not if she's awake. If she suspected the truth, she'd be dangerous. <laughs> Isn't she awfully young to to be struck with that kind of disease, Doctor? Elsa tells me for over a year she's had aches and pains. She hasn't been very good about physical checkups. And would have spotted the condition long ago. Well, will she be... Will she be crippled? Remissions have been known to occur, but there's no specific cure for rheumatoid arthritis. And she has the symptoms. Yes. Where'd you get it? Don't I wish I knew. Now, what your wife needs is bed rest, baths, rubs, and a good frame of mind. She... she will become crippled. Uh, I won't deceive you. It's likely, yes. Good Lord. She's only 38, Dr. Berg. I know. Uh, Doctor... Doctor, take a look at this. Oh, the needlepoint picture of your house. A fine piece of work. I told you about the tree and the dog. Now look at this. Hmm. Figure of a woman leaning on a cane. Well, as late as nine o'clock tonight, that figure was standing erect. Now, it's leaning on a cane. Oh. I, I don't understand. Neither do I. You're sure you're not mistaken? No. It's some kind of... of, of 
magic. <laughs> That's a little beyond my uh, understanding. Oh, uh, excuse me, Doctor. Well, I'll be on my way. Uh, be sure that your wife gets plenty of rest. Yes. Oh, Rick. Hi. Uh, this is Dr. Berg. My son, Rick. Hello, and goodbye. What is it, Rick? Uh, I had to talk to you, Dad. Uh, Can it wait? I've had a devil of a night. Yeah, me too. Oh, well, sit down. What's the picture doing back up in the living room, Dad? I... Take a look at it. There's a good chance that Elsa's got rheumatoid arthritis. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. I don't think she knows it yet. Elsa was right. There's a curse on that picture. Take a careful look at it. Well, the, uh... Figure the woman leaning on the cane? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what I came to tell you about. Yeah, I'm scared. I thought something like this might happen. Why? Grandma. What? Grandma is making a copy for herself of this original needlepoint picture. Yes. Yeah, and in the copy, she's omitted the, the maple tree and the dog and... Well, and now, in real life, both are gone. And I'm willing to bet that in Grandma's copy, the erect figure of the woman is bent over and leaning on a cane. <laughs> Do I sound crazy? I can't believe it, Rick. How can we believe that my mother has discovered some power to... Oh, no, it doesn't make sense. Have you known about this for some time? Well, only since I saw Grandma's needlepoint with a tree gone from it, and that was just at the time the tree was blown down. I saw her tonight, and the dog was gone, and now, Chin Chin is dead. This is beyond sense. Uh, Dad, I wouldn't tell Elsa. No, I suppose not. I think if she can move, she'd want to kill my mother. I almost feel that way myself. The question is this. Is old Nell Atterwood a force for good or for evil? And there's another question. Does she know she seems to possess thoughts that can kill? As distinguished a philosopher as Santayana once wrote, that there is nothing impossible in the existence of the supernatural, its existence seems to me to be decidedly probable more when I continue with Act 3. Dreams are trips into limbo. Many are fantastic, but most of them are remembrances of highlights in our lives, of narrow escapes, of triumphs, of pleasures that are still vivid in our minds. And the good dreams are a storehouse in each of us, which is a safeguard and guide in our daily living. But is the strength of any remembrance strong enough to be lethal? Is Grandmother Atterwood a killer? What have you been doing, Mother? Good morning, Ed. Rick? Hi, Grandma. I don't see you for months, and you greet me with, what have I been doing? <laughs> So what I've been doing is living here at the home, minding my own business. You've been needlepointing a copy of the picture of the house you gave me and Elsa for our wedding present. Along with the house. Let's not forget that, Ed. Yes? Yes, I have been making a copy of the old house. And killing a tree and a dog and inflicting rheumatoid arthritis on my wife. You sound addled. I kill a tree and a dog and injure Elsa. That's preposterous. May I see the needlepoint? I think not. Are you afraid to show it to me? Not for myself, no. But I don't want it damaged. And in your mood, you might try to rip it to pieces. Because you've taken out the tree and the dog, and you've made the figure of the woman on the front lawn a cripple. And everything you've done on that canvas has come true in real life. What's happened was bound to happen. I had nothing whatever to do with it. Those things were determined in the nature of things. The maple was rotten... Mm -hmm. Chin Chin always chased cars, and as for Elsa, arthritis is no great surprise in a person who's had gout. Now, just what are you accusing me of? 
hatred. You hate Elsa. You hate me for marrying her. You hate being here instead of in your own house. And somehow you've destroyed a tree and a dog. And now you've inflicted an injury on my wife. Dad, that, that just doesn't make sense. You be quiet. Now listen, Mother. I don't want you to take another stitch in that miserable picture. Are you accusing me of necromancy? Conjuration? Can you in your right mind believe that I have such a power? How else can I explain what's been happening? It's not I who hate Elsa, or you for marrying her, or living here instead of my old home. It's you, Ed. Why don't you face it? You're miserable. You were bedazzled by a pretty face and a good figure. But is Elsa half the person that your first wife was? I'm in love with Elsa. No, you're not. Infatuated, maybe. You're so far in debt, you're planning to sell the house and move to Florida. Move with what? A few thousand dollars left over from the sale. No. No, with money, Elsa wanted me to advance. I'm sorry about that, Mother. I'm sorry about the whole thing. It's all very strange. I'm making a copy of the original picture because I want it to remind me of the house. The disasters you speak of just happened. They're signs of a decay, of the rotting away of values that were good. For which you blame Elsa. No. How can I blame her without blaming you? And how can I blame her when she and I just couldn't get along with each other? You are blaming me. You must admit that you hate her. I don't admit that. Elsa hates everyone except herself. There are people like that. She may even come to hate you if you don't become the man she wants you to be. No, Ed. No, Elsa is just incompatible with your family. That's why we scattered in all directions. But we still love you. Am I right, Rick? Of course. I... I'll be going along to work. I'm sorry about the things I said. Ed, let me explain something. You know... That figure leaning on the cane. Yeah. I am that figure. No. Are you crippled with arthritis? I will be. Now, here's what I intend to do. I'll, uh, I'll take out that figure and stitch in a new one of a person who is erect and without a cane. Let's see what happens next. Well, Dr. Berg? Your wife is much improved. Uh, she still has pain, especially in the right hip, but she can move around. Remission? Uh, no, Mr. Atterwood, not this quickly. Uh, arthritis, it doesn't go away overnight. Uh, I learned just now she has had a history of gout. It's uh, an allied disease. But she can get around. Oh, yes. For a while, uh, how long I could not say. I prescribed for her, and she'll get relief. Oh, that's good news. Oh, darling, how are you? Better. Doctor Berg's in wonder. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'll, I'll be on my way. Uh, I can see myself out. Good night, and, and and thank you. Ed, I've got something to tell you. Sit down, darling. I hope you'll understand. I'm leaving. I see. I have some friends in Papano who'll take me in for a month or so until I find a place to live. You made up your mind? Your mother made up my mind. After what you told me about that needle point of hers, I'm not safe in this house. That that old witch killing my daughter. Chinchin oh, chased cars and got run over. Not until she took his picture out of the needle point. She's in league with the devil. Look, I'll put the house on the market, and we'll no. move... No. Stay here. This is where you belong. Not with me. I want to be free of you and your family. You two are becoming regular visitors. <laughs> yeah. Rick told me what happened this morning, Grandma. And it wasn't very pleasant, Polly. But um, you'll agree it's all been kind of funny. <laughs> yes. 
and I've been thinking about it all day. <laughs> Darned if I can figure it out. Maybe, not consciously, but maybe deep down inside your mind there's a, a powerful subconscious wish to restore what was. You know, you and us with Dad in the old house. Oh, I can't believe that, Rick. I, I told you before, what's past is past. I did make the change in the needle point. Is it just about complete? Just about. Here, take a look. Oh, it's just lovely. Oh, thank you. Grandma, that change in the needle point you were making, Rick said you told Dad you'd take out the figure of the woman with the cane and put in one of a woman standing erect. Yes. Substituting Elsa for me. Elsa upright. I was the figure with the cane. Well, where is the figure? Pardon? There's... There's no figure of the woman in the picture at all. Just Dad and Polly and me. Let me see that. Oh! Saints above! You... You did sew in the new figure. As I sit here before you. I picked out the stitches of the other figure and... Oh, well, this is incredible. Now, what could have happened to the new figure? And what could it mean? Maybe we'd... We'd better telephone Dad and... No, uh, let's go over there, Polly. I smell trouble. That's all I can tell you, kids. I carried her bags down to the car and she drove off. I'm sorry, Dad. I'm sorry, too. It's weird about the needle point. When we looked at Grandma's copy and the figure was gone, we... Well, we thought Elsa had died. What is the explanation? Don't ask me. I really began to think that my mother was practicing some kind of magic. But I... I don't believe in the supernatural. Look, why don't you sell the house and go after Elsa? You love her, don't you? I thought I loved her. She's a beautiful woman. But she's been slipping away from me for the last couple of years. What did your grandmother say when she saw the figure missing from her copy of the picture? She was bowled over. I wish I could explain it. None of this makes sense. Unless you believe in some superpower that decreed these things should happen. And that's beyond me. When I mentioned them to Dr. Berg and showed him the needlepoint, he gave me a very funny look. Said I'd imagined all of it. I wish I had. Have you destroyed the original picture? No. And now I'm not going to. It's leaning against the wall behind the sofa. Mm. I'd like to take a look at it. Dad, now what are you going to do about dinner? Why don't the three of us go out? I don't like to think of you here alone. That's thoughtful of you, Paul. But I'd like to be alone. I've got a lot to think through. You are not going to believe this. Either of you. Take a look at the original picture. Why? The dog has been restored. And so has the figure of a woman. I give up. I really do. What does this mean? I think I know. If you come with me, we'll find out. Well, you don't have to, Doctor, but wouldn't you enjoy the drive south? Uh, I can't deny it. You're really a terrible woman. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I'm vital and want to enjoy every ounce of life? But, uh, why me? You're not unattractive, Doctor. And being a doctor, you'd be able to, uh, look after me. Here it is. With four figures in the foreground and a dog. When did you do this, Mother? Well, I worked on it all day, but I don't think that that will restore Elsa to you, Ed. You say uh, she's left. Yeah. Just about the time her figure disappeared from this copy of the picture of the house. Explain the dog, Grandma. Well, as I told you, the 
house was to be an ideal house. It needs a good dog. And then there you are, Ed, and here are Polly and Rick, with your wife dead and with Elsa having run away. The place needed an older woman to kind of hold it together. So that's you in the picture, right? Yes. It doesn't mean I'm back there in the house any more than you or Polly are, Rick. It's just a picture of a reasonably happy group, and it gives me pleasure to look at it, that's all. No magic. No. All the magic went out of it when Elsa moved in. She wasn't entirely to blame. She wanted things her way. You made it possible for her. And drove you into this place, and Polly and Rick out on their own, and me into debt. Regret is a hiding place, not a sanctuary. What happened to you is regrettable because you say it is. But if you don't put your regrets aside, you won't have a tomorrow, Ed. And what I want for tomorrow is to have you move back into the house with me, Mother. And Polly and Rick, too. Is that what you really want? Now? Yes. And I'll tell you something. It will hurt, but you'll find it out sometime. So you may as well hear it from me. Dr. Berg, who attends us here, is driving south for a week. He's not going alone. He's chauffeuring a patient of his who has shown signs of rheumatoid arthritis. He's been interested in her for a long time. You're implying... I've suspected it. So I did try a kind of magic to save you and your sanity. Then... Then all this really was a... a supernatural phenomenon? You might call it that. What do you call it? I think I call it... Love. It began with a needlepoint picture of an old house that first showed signs of decay when a man's second wife methodically emptied it of his mother and his two grown children. It was restored when love, apparently helped by some strange magic, made an ideal copy of the picture, and events followed that restored the impetuous man to his senses. Did Nell Atterwood possess supernatural powers? She denied it. But will her happily restored family ever really know? I'll be back shortly. A bad apple can spoil a barrel. There are persons like that. Those who don't fit into society because they're self-centered, unapproachable, and defensive. Such a person was Elsa Atterwood. She almost squeezed the life out of the family that adopted her, but not quite. Our cast included Carmen Matthews, Terry Keene, Gordon Gould, Jennifer Harmon, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Well, the words were, don't worry, Nan, I'm all right. Don't worry. Love him. And those sentences ran across the bottom of the screen. Yes, time after time, half the evening long. I telephoned the TV station, but they thought it was some kind of a nut. Did your daughter see the sentences? No. And uh, she was watching with you and she can read? Yes. I know it sounds incredible, Major Wayne. I have no reason to disbelieve you, Mrs. Archer. Well, what the devil do you make of it? I don't know quite what to say. I don't want to give you hope, but I think that James Archer, voluntarily or by force, has been transported from the Earth to some planet beyond sight and comprehension. Radio. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.